Hey everybody, Dutch Sense here. 3.14 p.m. Central Time on Friday, August 7th, 2015. And I've got you looking at Earthquake 3D here, which is a USGS feed of the most recent earthquakes. Right now we're looking at the last 48 hours of 2.5 and greater in the United States and territories, and 4.0 and greater internationally. And we're already looking at a lot of activity over the last 48 hours. And I just want to get right into it as to what's occurred over the past few days. And we'll get right into the forecast as to what to expect over the next seven days. But before we get into what to expect over the next seven, first we have to understand what's transpired over the past 48 hours. And as you can see on the screen here, there's been some excessive Pacific movement on the West Pacific and the East Pacific in that 5.0 range again reaching all the way around the entire Pacific plate and the reason that has occurred if we actually have to go back to the last seven days of earthquake activity and then you can really see it and if you're a longtime viewer there's going to be three spots that stand out to you already uh, here on the globe this is an earthquake 3d feature the higher these are off the planet the deeper the earthquake is into the earth so we have several earthquakes spaced out all the way around the Pacific happening at a very deep level in an area called the asthenosphere, which is just a fancy term for the semi-melted magma below the plates, the plates resting on top of that viscous magma down below. And when there's earthquakes that happen at that far depth, that there's a upwelling that occurs on the plate above. And that causes shallow, larger earthquakes and clusters of earthquakes. And it's given away. Look at the activity over the last seven days. And there's going to be people that say, oh, well, you know, that's just 4.0 earthquake activity. Um, well, let's take a look at the five and greater. Okay, now you can really see it. We just have that uh, single most recent 4.4. I can't get that off the map. But you can see, look at the 5.0 and greater activity in the far west Pacific. Again, a lot of earthquake movement over the past seven days. That upwelling has been pressed all the way around the Pacific, and it's causing 5.0 earthquakes to pop off in Central America, South America. And if we go west towards Europe from the Pacific, you can follow the line of earthquakes all the way here, skipping right over the Middle East, where we should see some building movement in Turkey, Iran, uh, Afghanistan, in this region here. And then we have earthquakes that have developed in Europe. There was a 4.2 that struck southeast England yesterday. And do you see it here on the USGS map? They don't have it. So let me bring you over to my website. And here's the stats on this from the Europeans. Here's a screenshot of the earthquakes from yesterday. And that's a direct earthquake forecast hit. We were watching for 4.0 earthquake activity to strike south England going into the English Channel. I talked about it hitting possible London, shaking up the area around London and look where it struck. If it was just maybe 50 to 100 miles west, it would have been in an area where everyone would have felt it. It happened just out in the North Sea off the eastern coast of England in the forecast area during the time that it was forecast for. We're looking for that 4.0 activity, got a 4.2. USGS doesn't have it on here, but you can also see the 3.9 that struck the 4.0 that struck North Italy right in the area warned as well. South Italy, two back-to-back 4.4 -back earthquakes near Sicily, so that's a lot of movement to see in Europe as well. Again, all over the last seven days. See something here in Africa? We don't normally see movement here in Africa. I would like to point out that this is actually happening at the foot of a volcano. So let's go ahead and take a quick look. Let's get the coordinates from the USGS. And the way you do this, guys, if you ever see an earthquake that's in an area where you don't normally see earthquake activity, you actually should take the coordinates from the USGS Put them in on Google Earth or Google Maps. I recommend Google Earth because it has functions and features you can turn on and off, like volcano IDs and USGS IDs that you can't get on Google Maps. So we'll put the coordinates here on Google Earth, and we'll hit search. Okay, and we're zooming in on the area, and you can see it's just a few miles away from a Smithsonian Institute marked volcano. We'll click on that. Uh, of course, it's giving us the information here and it's part of a volcanic field, this whole lake here reaches up to another volcanic complex to the north. This is the southernmost volcano here at this volcanic complex in South Central Africa. So when we see this kind of movement happening nearby, this is actually a sign of greater plate pressure, and it's given away by all the earthquake activity. Again, 
Look at this. It spills all the way across Asia. It's putting pressure, obviously, on Africa as well, giving way at the weak points, which also happen to be volcanic points. The weak point is going to be the spot where that upwelling occurs, and it could cause, in the past, it has caused volcanic eruptions. Further south, north of Antarctica, on the south mid-Atlantic ridge, going from the South Sandwich Islands eastward to south of Johannesburg, South Africa, Again, multiple 5.0 earthquakes reaching up the mid-Atlantic to the central mid-Atlantic. So you can see the 5.2 here. And then that brings us back over towards Cuba, which is a whole nother story. Uh, just east of Cuba at Puerto Rico, see all of these thousands of earthquakes? Okay, there's been so many earthquakes happening at this location, and they're stacked one on top of each other. Again, as I told you, these indicate the depth, the higher these are off the planet. So literally from right at the surface, going down to about 100 miles deep, all right on top of one another. What's going on there off the northeast coast of Puerto Rico? Well, let me just go ahead and show you, okay? We can pull any one of these earthquakes. Let's try to find a moderate-sized one. Uh, let's see, we got a 3.5 right here. All right, and that's again happening in the Puerto Rican Trench. But I want to show you what's actually there and explain what's going on so we know what to expect over the next few days. We could see larger movement at this location now because of the amount of movement that's already happened. And I'll explain what's behind that in a second as we get the location pulled up here on Google Earth. All right, and let me just give you a shot of the greater region here. So here's South Florida, here's Cuba, here's Haiti, Dominican Republic, and here's Puerto Rico. We'll zoom in and you'll see all of these marked volcanoes from the Smithsonian Institute. I'd like to point out that one of them, Kikum Jenny, uh, the far south tip of this chain is actually getting ready to, has already erupted, and there were warnings and alerts issued for Kikum Jenny just last week and the week before. Also last week, or two weeks ago now, a M6.4, magnitude 6.4 earthquake struck east of Barbados. Now what I want to show you about this, look in the lower right hand corner down here. You see all these numbers? See where it says elevation, E-L-E-V? And it's um, as I'm moving my mouse around, of course, that's numbers bouncing around. This is actually below the surface of the sea. So we're at negative 15,000 feet below. And as you move your mouse over to the left, you see it start to go up, 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 up. You see now we're at only negative 3,000 feet. And you get up to Barbados, and all of a sudden we're above sea level, right? There's the island, and then it starts going back down, okay? So that explains the volcanic chain here down to the south and you can see where the plates meet where the mid-atlantic this is bulging up this doesn't go down right here this is actually rising but you get over to here and it starts to go down 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 look at the elevation here negative 16,000 feet negative 18,000 feet and then we get down into where the earthquakes are occurring okay negative 24 25 26 it only goes down to 27,000 28,000 feet here these earthquakes, these thousands of earthquakes are happening all throughout here at the deepest spot of the trench off the north coast of Puerto Rico. What does that mean? It means there's pressure coming from the west. And let's go back over to Earthquake 3D really quick. And you can see it. Okay. The subduction process that would normally take place here is not. And actually the pressure is transferring across the Puerto Rican trench over to Puerto Rico where this buckling is occurring. And it's actually, I believe, there's some kind of volcanic movement happening here. You can see there's an old crater here. Okay, it's not that well uh, noticeable, of course, because of the resolution. But we have an old undersea crater here. And also, this, as this is pressed down, this area is pressed upwards. So Puerto Rico, if there were to be GPS measurements done, I don't know if they are done or not, should be somewhat rising at this point. Because of the amount of movement happening down here, there should be movement happening up here as well that we're just not hearing about yet. So thousands of earthquakes down here at the bottom. And again, why? Because the pressure that's coming should be relieved by the subduction process where the Pacific plate over here goes below Central America, goes below the west coast of the United States. Instead, let me explain what's happening here. Along the west coast of the United States, Central America, the pressure is actually coming from up here. Over in the West Pacific, this upwelling is causing shallow earthquakes to spill all the way up through Japan. This is an upwelling of the entire Pacific Plate. Again, we have deep movement happening on all sides. 
pushing up from underneath. This is going to displace, is displacing the entire Pacific plate along the subduction zones, again coming from the northwest to the southeast over here on the East Pacific and going from the southwest to the northeast along the West Pacific as the plate is displaced. And that's then translating across North America and Central America and causing earthquakes over here to the east where the mid-Atlantic, the Atlantic is meeting these other plates to the west. So plates meet right here and we're seeing earthquakes develop along the edge of the North American craton and now the Central American plate as well here over towards Puerto Rico. Also to the west, look at the swarm of earthquakes that struck here last night in Baja, Mexico, Central Mexico, Going into Southern California, a series of earthquakes have happened over the past day that's very noteworthy. Normally, Colima Volcano and Popo Volcano in Mexico have been relieving the pressure in this region, and we haven't seen much earthquake activity. Now it's struck, just like we were expecting. Guys, go back and watch my earthquake forecast from last week. This is the area that we were talking about, Baja, California, Southern California, and look at the movement that's happened. I'd also like to draw your attention to the movement that's happened across the North American Craton. This is going to lead us into our forecast now. Now that we've kind of reviewed the entire globe as to what's happened over the past seven days, we didn't get into South America, but we'll cover that in a second. Here in North America, you can see all of these earthquakes along the edge of the North American plate going all the way up to the northeast in southeast Quebec. In that forecast area where we were watching for earthquake movement, we saw it struck southeast Quebec right in the warned area in the time warned with the magnitude warned and down here to the south as well Texas 3.4 at the fracking operations you see the huge swarm of earthquakes here in Oklahoma and Kansas these are all fracking operations as well you can look up any one of these earthquake coordinates and you will find the fracking operation at the epicenter let's just do that let's pull the 3.4 down here in Texas okay southeast of Pecos do it the same way we'll pull the summary and we'll grab the coordinates. You guys got to do this. Really, if you see an earthquake that stands out in Texas or out there in the middle of Africa, look it up. Pull the coordinates. Put them in. It takes two seconds, and you'll be shocked to find what's at these locations. So we'll zoom in. And I've already marked this area from other earthquakes that have happened here in the past. But you can see here we've got a farm operation. And, uh, what, a 1,000 feet to the east. You can see I've already got them marked. We'll just zoom in and show you. Looks like they're doing some fresh drilling here. They got the drill rig. Look at that. And here's our storage tanks. We've got our gas pipelines. These are all connected via pipeline, and they'll take this off to a central processing facility that actually uh, reduces and condenses the gas for use. And look at how far this goes on. Let me just show you. Okay, each one of these, I, I've just marked the ones right around here, but each one of these is, guys. Every square you see on the map here is a different pumping operation, fracking operation, oil well drill head operation so they're either drilling or pumping or injecting water fluids deep down into the ground and you're going to be shocked when i start to scroll here because it just goes on and on and on and we know of course texas is known for its oil well operations but just look at what they're doing guys so is it any wonder that there's uh, earthquakes happening at these locations when you've got this much drilling going on when you're fracturing out the crust injecting water deep down into the ground to release the gas out of the shale that's actually having an earthquake effect based upon the pressure that's coming from the opposite direction like I'm talking about here pressure coming from the west coast not being taken care of by subduction instead the pressure is transferring along the rigid edge of the craton and you can see it given away here by earthquakes. Also, we have another rare earthquake that struck in southern Arizona at the New Mexico border. So we'll get the stats on this. I want to show you what's there. If you're a longtime viewer, you'll already remember this location from the 5.0 earthquake that struck this very same location last year. And there was a huge swarm that struck this spot, not just one. I'd like to point out this is also due west of our location here in Texas. So we've got the Texas location, the fracking operation that just had an earthquake in the 3.0 range, and we just go due west, and we'll let the image load, and this takes us in on a series of old dormant volcanic buttes, and there's no doubt about it. Okay, you can zoom in on this, and we've got past imagery. We can just take this through the past images, 
going back a long ways. Uh, here's the 1996 black and white image. Here's uh, a more grainy image from 2003. There's our 2006 imagery. Here's our 2010 imagery. 2011. Here, let me bring it in at an angle so you can really get a good view on this. And they even have a monitoring station up on top. I mean, somebody is monitoring this old cone. And why would they be doing that? Now, this isn't some kind of lava flow, guys. This is the uh, way they're going to drive up and drive down. These are emergency stop lanes on the way down. So somebody's driving up that to take that, whatever that is, some kind of monitoring station up there on top. It's not a radio tower, that's for sure. And that is an old dormant cone volcano, part of a series of buttes here to the west. So there's earthquakes happening there. Why? Why are there earthquakes happening along the edge of the craton? The pressure from the west is displacing the whole plate. And the weak spots are the areas where the pressure releases. Let me explain up here to the north. Let me turn down the ring so you can get a better idea. Okay, In northwest Nevada, you see this stack of earthquakes here. This is also happening, just like down here in Arizona, this is also happening at a volcanic butte. To prove that to you, let me go ahead and open up the location, grab the coordinates, and I know this is painfully long to watch, but it's worth it because you will understand in the end how this is all occurring, why this is occurring, and what to watch for over the next seven days. Okay, as we zoom in on the area, you'll be able to see that there's previous earthquakes that have been marked here by myself uh, in the past multiple swarms going all the way north of the border up into Oregon here, and this makes the edge of a fault zone. It's clearly obvious, given away by the mountain range here, but as we zoom in, there's a spot here uh, just to the south right here, Bittner Butte. This is an old dormant volcano, long dormant, ancient, extinct, I guess. Um, you can see the old lava flows here, and the butte itself, its edges are given away as an old underwater, undersea flow of some kind. This, is this goes back possibly millions of years when this area, this whole area, was underwater. And so when you look at that and you find out Bittner Butte, this is part of a series of buttes, Yellow Peak, uh, also down here to the south, Table Butte. These are different volcanoes that spring up off the edge of an old fault zone. And this fault zone hasn't moved in a very, very long time, by the way. So seeing these swarms develop out, again, on the flanks of volcanic flows from a long time ago, lets you know that the whole plate is being displaced from underneath. Again, the Pacific Plate is displacing the North American plate, the Central American plate, the South American plate, and the areas to the west across Asia going into Europe, all stemming from this excessive activity out here to the West Pacific. And it's doing something they never said could happen, which is pressure is transferring across vast distances, displacing entire plates. Instead of subducting, we're seeing pressure transfer. Okay. And finally, I'd like to point out up here to the top, uh, in the North United States, this is part of the Yellowstone Magma Chamber area. Here's Yellowstone National Park where my mouse is, and here's Northern Montana. 11 Grand Canyons worth of magma going down 20 to 30 miles exists from Yellowstone National Park going north and northwest through Montana, western into Idaho. And when you see earthquakes happen at these spots, again, it's just a sign that the magma chambers are being slightly perturbed by the pressure coming from the west coast. If you were to go analyze all of these earthquakes down the west coast, you'd find out that here in Nevada, each one of these, also in Southern California at Salton Sea Buttes, going west uh, towards Clear Lake Volcano at the Geysers, California, almost all of these earthquakes along here are either happening at pumping operations or dormant volcanoes. I don't have time to show you all of them. You guys can go look them up yourselves if you're curious. I'm trying to just show you overall that most of these, again, I proved to you, Earthquakes here, already known, fracking. Earthquake here in Texas, fracking. We have one lone earthquake in the New Madrid seismic zone due to pressure, and earthquakes happening on the East Coast due to pressure transferring across the entire plate. So, over the next seven days, what do we expect in the United States? What do we expect internationally? This is actually going to be fairly easy to nail down based upon the other activity that's going on internationally. I suppose we should first do the international forecast and then do the United States because it'll be easy to understand why the United States is going to have the activity that we're going to expect over the next week based upon this activity that's going to happen here in the West Pacific. So you can see cluster spots of 5.0 earthquakes. Here's Fiji, 
below all these earthquakes right here, a silent spot over the last 48 hours across Papua New Guinea and the Solomon Sea, Solomon Island chain. This isn't normal. Normally there should be some major movement happening here because of the activity happening on both sides, on all sides of this location. And there hasn't been. This means there's building pressure in the region. We also have one moderately deep earthquake raised off the globe here. And if we just take this back just a few days, you can see the last deep earthquake to strike was happening here at Fiji. So this means the area to the west of Fiji, Solomon Islands going into eastern Papua New Guinea, should be on watch for a larger shallow earthquake above 6.0, more likely in that mid 6 to possibly upper 6.0 range, maybe even a 7.0, but I'm leaning more towards the mid six to happen at this location. Let me zoom in so we can really nail it down, down to maybe a 500 mile zone to watch over the next seven days. In the silent zone, Eastern Papua New Guinea going east into the Solomon Islands, watching this region here. If it strikes a little to the west or a little to the east, I won't be shocked, but I'm watching this spot because it is silent and it shouldn't be. Further to the west, you can see the cluster spots given away throughout Sumatra, Indonesia, going north through the Philippines, up into Japan, the 5.2, off the coast of northeast Japan. Anytime we start to see shallow 5.0 earthquake activity happening near Japan, this lets us know Japan's in a state of flux, and over the next week, we should see it build up, not go down. Why? Because the activity already spreading across the Pacific is giving way to larger activity. So you can see smaller clusters of fours giving way to clusters of fives. These clusters of fives will give way to a few six. And so we have to watch up here in Japan, and it's a pretty small area to watch. See the spot where the 5.2 is, and the 4.5, and the 4.3. If you were to connect these three dots, we would need to watch the area south of the 5.2 along the line of the Izu Trench and the area south of the 5.2 along the line going down to Okinawa, Taiwan. It's a small triangle to watch out of the whole region, and this is the spot where we should see larger movement over the next seven days. And it would be on an order of a magnitude at least one magnitude higher than what we're seeing now because the whole area is being displaced from underneath. Again, based upon that deep movement, okay, you can see the deep movement on both sides raised high off the globe here. Deep 5.0 here, too deep 4.0 here, and nothing up here to the north, especially near Taiwan, Okinawa, South Japan, going up to um, central Japan. This region here should show activity, and it should be fairly large over the next week. Going westward, let's again get this back down to the uh, last 48 hours. Again, you can see the progression of earthquakes spreading across Sumatra, Indonesia, two 5.2s. And this is the area where there's five volcanoes erupting right now, by the way, five separate ongoing volcanic eruptions in this location. That's a sign of the greater pressure, again from under, underneath the plate, pressing up, causing earthquakes, and volcanic eruptions in these regions. So you can see the cluster spot, or at least one earthquake. Let me go ahead and turn this down a little bit so you can see the others. North of India. Now Kathmandu has been reported to be Nepal, where the big earthquake happened, Kathmandu, is back on the map for the professionals, saying that not all the penned energy has been spent. So we need to watch now in Nepal, not because of what I'm saying, but because the professionals are watching. We need to keep an eye on the area. Now, it's already given way by a few earthquakes around India, more towards the west of Nepal instead of right at Nepal. Maybe just a little west of Nepal needs to be on watch and a little east of Nepal needs to be on watch. Maybe not the same spot where the big earthquake struck a few months ago. But the cluster spot is a giveaway that this spot is going to be moving on a larger level over the next seven days. And then that really reduces our areas to watch. Let me turn down the ring so you can get a better idea where these are occurring. Here's India, and it seems to be happening along the Himalayan range. Okay, so that reduces our area to watch. Watch along the Himalayan range over the next seven days, and we should see more hefty movement in the area here where the cluster spot's already giving way the spot to watch. If we see movement down here to the south on either side adjacent, let's just go ahead and take a look over the last seven and really get an idea of what's happened. Okay, so you can see there's a small spot down here that's silent, again, connecting Sumatra, Indonesia, up north into India. So this might be a spot we need to watch, and the area to the west of the cluster spot would be the area to watch as well. 
So not only are the professionals watching this spot and it's given way by multiple earthquakes, I'm watching the silent spots, which takes us down into Iran, Turkey. This is the Caspian Sea here, so we need to watch in the area right along the mountain range through Iran going east into Turkey. Okay, so it's a, it's a, that's a fairly large area to watch. Again, it would be south of the Caspian Sea, so this kind of nails it down to a small stretch. But the mountain ranges that exist through here are going to be the areas that should show movement. Again, based upon the other movement coming from the West Pacific, you can trace the dots. Let me back this out so you can really see it. Okay, you can trace the dots over from the West Pacific across Asia, and then there's a silent spot right here. That's the area that should show movement over the next seven days. As we get over towards Europe, again, there's that 4.2 that struck up here in England. And again, they didn't report that to you. Why didn't they report it to you? Because it confirms an earthquake forecast that was issued exactly for that spot. And they say earthquakes can't be forecast. So instead of having eggs on their face, they actually don't report the earthquake. Really, it's that sensitive of a topic online in science right now. So where do we watch in Europe? Well, because the pressure has come over here from the West Pacific, and let's take this down over the last 48 hours, there's only been one 4.2 earthquake up here in North England. This means the area of South Europe, Greece, Southern Italy, going east into Eastern Turkey, most likely Greece though, right off the shores of Greece, there's been a series of past 6.0 and greater earthquakes. It's been silent for you guys. I mean, there's only been some smaller earthquake activity. Let's go ahead and open up the European feed. Since the USGS is not showing us certain earthquakes, Again, I can't explain why they wouldn't show it, but they're not. Let's go ahead and look at the smaller earthquakes from the European feed. Again, a cluster spot down here to the south, just a bunch of smaller stuff, nothing major to the north. This means down here to the south should kick us off on another new round for Europe. But first things first, the large earthquake has to strike in the Mediterranean before we start to see new pressure build up here to the north. Since the 4.2 released that pressure yesterday, you can imagine it was building and building and building and it finally released right here and then that resets it back down here to the south. So large earthquake should strike here over the next seven days, most likely off the coast of Greece when should be, when I say large, it should be in the upper five, lower 6.0 range and it should strike right down here. If it's a swarm, I won't be surprised, but it should be at least one single larger event that resets the whole area for movement over the next week. And so next forecast, I'll be talking about Europe watching for larger earthquakes to the north of Europe based upon this next week's activity, right? So I'm getting ahead of myself. Um, let's get in the United States forecast, what to expect over the next seven days, kind of beating around the bush on that. But now that you understand the greater activity happening internationally with the volcanoes in the West Pacific, the deep upwelling, uh, the Central American activity, Puerto Rico, okay, explaining all the trench, explaining this whole thing down here to the south, the upwelling pressure on the West Coast displaces spots here let's go ahead and turn the usgs back on now displaces the dormant volcanoes and the pumping operations in the united states as i explained so the areas that should show movement over the next seven days are the areas adjacent to the spots that already showed the movement previously does that make sense so the area to the northwest here we should be looking at at least a 4.5 5.0 or greater earthquake to strike up here on land. Again, this won't be out to sea. This will be up here on land somewhere between Nevada, Southern California, somewhere in this region. And that then takes it down to a few spots in Eastern California. Okay, we've got dormant volcanoes throughout the entire border region here near Mono Lake possibly. And then we also need to be on watch in Southern California. Look at the cluster of activity here. It's not like it's been in the past, guys. Normally in the past, it looks like an arrow pointing up here to the north with a bunch of larger activity up here to the north. Instead, it's down here to the south. So what does that mean? That means the southern United States is now going to be in an area of flux for the next five to seven days because look at the multiple 5.0 striking on the Baja California Peninsula or North Mexico, Northwest Mexico area. This area is in flux. This is now going to displace the southern edge of the craton and cause more earthquake activity at the fracking operations in Texas, might cause some noteworthy activity in southern Arizona, might cause a renewed activity in Colorado, which I really firmly believe they've turned off the reporting 
from that region. I can't prove it. I just believe it. Okay. There's no way that earthquakes completely stopped in this region. They're just not reporting them. Just like down in Texas, you have to call them on it. And then next thing you know, uh, the earthquakes start popping back on the feed. Same with up in Yellowstone. They just deliberately don't report the earthquakes, even though there are greater than 2.5 earthquakes that should be popping on the map. They're not. So southern United States, let's take it down and get it down to a fine point where to watch. I'm not going to put the whole south on warning for a large earthquake when we only really need to watch in Salton Sea going north to San Diego. Again, how do I come to that conclusion? Well, the area to the south has moved. The area to the east has moved. The area to the north has moved. Well, that puts us right down into this region that hasn't moved yet. This takes us north to, to Los Angeles, but more likely to the south because that's where the volcano is. Salton Sea Volcanic Buttes. If you're not familiar with the area, let me just go ahead and show you. Okay. Now I've got a bunch of markings on here. Let's go ahead and turn off my place markers. Okay. So here's uh, we've got Los Angeles, Long Beach. We've got San Diego down here. And just to their east, here's Salton Sea Volcanic Buttes. And you can read the information on this. You can go look it up yourself. They just elevated it to active in 2013 or 2012, 2013. And that's based upon some dating of some rock and some other stuff. But overall, this is just one of many volcanoes out here to the east. Okay, everybody uh, might be familiar with that Pisca volcano that I've covered in the past. There's Pisca craters right here. And again, this is part of a multiple volcanic butte, volcanic field that extends throughout eastern California. You'd be shocked to find out that there's literally hundreds of volcanoes out here. These are just the marked volcanoes from the Smithsonian Institute. Okay, so down here to the south here, just to give you an example of how many hundreds. I mean, they have one marked as Pinacate, but look how many there are. I mean, it just goes on and on and on. Here's more here, more to the west. You can go uh, more to the southeast here. Let's just back this out just a little bit so you can see what I'm talking about. Okay, all along the Arizona, Texas border, Southern California border, going all the way up the eastern border of California, a series of hundreds, if not thousands of volcanoes exist throughout here. So when we start to see earthquake activity develop at these locations, it's letting you know that there's greater pressure building from underneath the plate. And these are the areas we need to watch for larger movement over the next seven days based upon the upwelling pressure causing that movement. Now, far northwest, this goes up into Canada, actually, we can pretty much nix out Oregon, Washington State, we need to now be on watch because of all the activity up here in Alaska. The activity down here to the south puts North Vancouver going into South Alaska back in the watch zone over the next seven days. Just a small strip. Let me zoom in here and show you. Okay, North Vancouver Island right here going into the uh, tip of South Alaska. Believe it or not, Alaska comes all the way down here, guys. So if you didn't know that, Alaska reaches all the way down into this island chain here. So it's just a small area that I'm on watch for the next seven days for that 6.0 or greater earthquake activity. Why? There's already been two 6.9s up here over the past several weeks. Okay, and to show that to you, let's just go ahead and show that to you. We're going to look at the last 30 days, and we're only going to look at the larger earthquakes. We'll just let that load. Okay, here's the full 30 days, and let's get rid of the fives and only look at the sixes. Well, there's 5.9s. Okay, so you can see 6.9, 6.3. This started out as a 6.7, 6.8. They downgraded it to a 6.3. So that's really two greater than 6.0 earthquakes over the last 30 days in that location. Look here in the West Pacific. You can see it. Multiple large earthquakes spanning across the entire West Pacific. And that's no accident, no shock, because of the larger upwelling pressure happening at a deeper level that you don't see on the map here. So we have shallow large earthquakes. Not many deep large earthquakes, shallow large earthquakes based upon the deeper, smaller movement that's pushing the whole plate up from underneath. Now you might also see the 6.5 off the coast of Barbados over here in the Caribbean and the 5.9 in Panama. Again, giving away the pressure that transfers from the Pacific across towards the Atlantic. 
And that kind of flies in the face of modern day geology, which says that the mid Atlantic Ridge is spreading and causing earthquakes to spill over this way. No, actually, we're actually seeing it transverse across the entire Pacific from the West Pacific across Alaska, displacing the American plate with all those smaller earthquakes that I showed you. Just go ahead and look at the uh, 4.5s and greater over the last 30 days, and then you can see it. Again, there's the edge of the craton that I've been talking about. We have a lone 4.5, the largest earthquake of the year, by the way, to strike out here at the fracking operations in Kansas, or I'm sorry, Oklahoma, and then 4.7s, two back-to-back at that volcanic location at Bittner Butte that I showed you, and then one 4.8 up here off the north coast of Vancouver Island in between there and Alaska, where I told you we should see some new movement over the next seven days. Once we get down here to the south, look at it. I mean, the whole Pacific, last 30 days, a lot of activity to see. So I'd like to stress, have an earthquake plan ready. Be prepared just in case. You may never have to use it, but in times of emergency or in times of severe earthquake unrest, it's a good idea to have it dusted off in the earthquake prone locations and the earthquake prone locations in the united states i've shown you now uh exist down here to the south also up here in canada so that kind of takes us out of the u.s and a very sparsely populated area up here to the north you might remember the 7.7 magnitude earthquake that struck a few years ago was that 2012 um up here north of vancouver and there was nobody hurt it caused a wave and everything and and it was just it very few people even knew that it happened that was a 7.7 all right, so if we see a large earthquake up here, unless it causes a tsunami in a metropolitan area, it's not that big of a worry. If it happens on land, that's an entirely different story, but we're not really looking for that to happen up here in the northwest. Along the edge of the craton, make note of the states where this is occurring, where the movement is occurring, and where the edge of the craton exists. If you don't know about the craton, you can go look it up. I'll put a diagram up on the screen here now, and I will trace it out for you. The states along the edge of the plate are up here. The mountain ranges give it away. But Idaho, Montana, Wyoming, Utah, Colorado, Arizona, New Mexico, okay, all the way down through the mountain ranges. And then you can see the elevation map actually gives it away here on Earthquake 3D, which it, the fracking operations pick up along through Colorado and New Mexico, going down here through Texas, back up through Oklahoma and Kansas, and then back down through Arkansas. Again, where all those fracking earthquakes occurred over the past several years, tens of thousands of them have occurred throughout this region, and then it reaches back down, again, where we saw all the earthquakes down here in Mississippi, Alabama over the past several months, and then reaching back up the East Coast. And it seems to terminate up here in the far northeast, and you can see the edge goes out here to the Atlantic. So we see earthquakes pop off along the edge of the Craton, and then make note of where these states are and which states reside along the edge of the craton those are the areas we need to watch so it's a very large area to watch but the movement should be in the smaller 3 to 4.0 range at the most and the spots we watch are the weak spots so they're already given way by earthquakes you might see or hear about reports of mystery booms and rumbles that are occurring throughout the east coast i wouldn't expect a large earthquake here on the east coast first we will see a large earthquake to the west and how do I know that? In the past, when we see large earthquakes strike out here to the west, let me give you a perfect example. There was a 5.2, or started out as a 5.4, downgraded to a 5.0 earthquake that struck southern Colorado in 2011. 24 hours, less than 24 hours later, a 5.9 earthquake struck Virginia on the east coast, shook everybody up, caused damage to the Washington Monument. Many of you might remember that just a few years ago when that earthquake struck the east coast. Okay, well, before the earthquake struck the east coast, there was the earthquake at the fracking operation that gave way that let us know that there's movement coming, that there's greater craton pressure coming from the west coast. And the movement, of course, in Colorado was preceded by large activity here on the west coast. So first west coast moves, it pushes on the edge of the plate, causing the fracking operations to show larger movement. That then gives way to smaller movement on the east coast. So a large earthquake over here can cause movement over here. And so if you see movement develop over here like we're expecting, then watch for movement along the far northeast edge of the craton, which takes us up here into southeast Quebec and, again, sparsely populated areas uh, far up here in the northeast. Booms and rumbles should develop along the edge of the craton, and I wouldn't be surprised about that. 
Again, guys, don't be shocked or scared. Don't be scared. Be prepared, right? That's my motto. Always have a plan and be ready just in case. And just file it away in the back of your head. Make sure your friends, loved ones, coworkers, employees, that sort of thing, know what to do in case an earthquake strikes. Southern California should be on watch, certainly, over the next seven days. Okay, guys? So much love. Be safe.